Today, we'll be creating this particular sci-fi tunnel loop. It's different from any of the previous tunnel loops that we've created on this channel. So let's learn a few techniques and start the tutorial. In our default scene, we're gonna press X and delete the default cube and press Shift A and search for a Bezier curve. Then we can press seven to go to the top view and press tab to go into edit mode, or you can use the drop down over here and just select the left handle, press R Z 45, and then press minus to make it negative 45 so that it becomes straight with the right handle. And you see the right handle is actually two units in length. This one isn't, so we can just scale this up, press control and make sure that it's the same length as the right handle. Now that both the handles are of the same length, you can press R, Z, 90, and then press three to go to your side view. And then you can press tab to go back to edit mode. Of course, you didn't have to go to object mode, but I did, and it's all right. Now take the left handle and rotate it by 45 degrees. And in fact, we can make it minus 45 degrees. And then take the right handle and rotate this as well by minus 45 degrees. After that, you can press E to extrude it and then Y so that it snaps to the Y axis and then press control and just bring it out till it becomes the same size Size as the previous wave, which is going to be two units to the right. So you can type in the number two as well. So now you see you have two waves, one wave like this and another wave over here. Now you can press shift R to just repeat that action one more time. Once you're done with this, you can tap back out to object mode and then go to the object data properties or your curve properties, increase the resolution to 64 to make it perfectly smooth. After that, you can increase the twist method to Z up and change the smooth all the way to something like 100. That'll help the camera move smoothly while it's actually moving. After that, under the geometry, you can go down to bevel and increase the depth to something like 0 0.2 and increase the resolution all the way to 32, just so that it's a lot smoother. You see, if the resolution is down at four, you will be able to see the different edges and you don't want that. So we're gonna increase it to 32. Apart from that, I also wanna scale it up by two just to make it a little bit longer. Once you're done with that, you can actually set up the animation of the camera. So you can select the camera from the outliner, press Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation, then rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. After that, you can go to the object constraint properties over here and add in a new follow path constraint. And for the target, choose the Bezier curve and make sure you check follow curves so that it actually rotates along with the curve as it moves. Now over here, you see the offset in the positive direction is gonna take you in the wrong direction. So we have to animate the offset in the negative direction to let it go through the entire curve. So to do that animation, we can set all of the animation defaults and while we're at it, we'll set the render defaults as well. So we'll go to the render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections, after which we'll go down to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and change the end frame to 300, change the output folder to wherever you want it to be and change the file format to FFmpeg video. The encoding has to be changed from Matroska to MPEG-4 and the output quality can be set to perceptually lossless. Once you're happy with that, just increase the timeline a little bit so that you can see it better. Go back to frame number zero, go to the object constraint properties, change the offset to zero as well, and then press I to add in a keyframe. Then go all the way to frame 300 and then change the offset to minus 100 and then press I to add in another keyframe. Now you'll see the default is Bezier, which means it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle and then becomes slow again towards the end. We don't want that, so we're gonna press T and change it to linear. So now we'll get a perfectly looping animation. To make it loop, we're actually gonna have to take this and duplicate it to the left and the right. But before doing that, I wanna add in a few particles for the camera to actually face. However, I'm gonna select the camera, press zero to go into the camera view to see what we're seeing. And clearly we're not seeing much inside the camera view. To fix that, we're gonna to go to the camera properties over here, change the focal length down to something really small like 12 to increase the field of view. And along with that, We'll go down to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that we don't see anything outside the camera view. So that way we actually see a little bit more of the tunnel, which just makes this a little bit more visually interesting. Now we want to add in some particles that this camera will face while going through this tunnel. So we'll select the tunnel, increase the timeline a lot more and change it from the timeline to the geometry node editor. Press new to add in a new geometry node tree. Now the group input is going to be required along with the particles that we create. So we're gonna have to search for a joint geometry node so that we can add both of those objects. So once we've placed that in, we can press shift A again and search for a mesh to volume node because we can't distribute points within the volume without this particular node. So we can just plug that in and it immediately turns into a cloud. Along with that, we'll just decrease exterior bandwidth to zero and we can increase the interior bandwidth to 0 0.1. And now you can see how we have the volume present in certain regions. However, I feel like the volume is being clumped 
to certain regions. So I'm just going to increase the exterior bandwidth to 0.01. Once you have that set up, you can search for a distribute points in volume node and plug that in after the mesh to volume so that they turn into points. However, we'll have to increase the density to actually see some points. So let's increase the density fairly large to something like 1000. And now you get the different points. And since we're in Eevee, we can't just use points to render out in the final render. So we actually need to instance some objects onto these points. So we'll search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the distribute points and volume. And for the instance, we need an object. So let's search for an icosphere and change the radius down to something like 0 0.01 initially, increase the subdivisions to something like four and plug the mesh into the instance. So now you have the icospheres, but if you actually look closely, you can still see the faces of the spheres. We don't want that. So we're going to have to set the shading to smooth. So we can search for a set shade smooth node and plug that in right here. And now we get a nice smooth icosphere. Now, apart from just the points, we require the original group input as well. So we're just going to take this and plug that into the joint geometry. So now we have the curve as well as the points. So if we press zero, we can actually see the points present now. You can switch off the overlays by toggling this button. And this is what we see. Now I want a few more points. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase the density to something like 2000. And I'm also going to save the file from time to time. Another thing that you'll notice is that the particles are fairly towards the edges of this particular object. And that's because the mesh that was converted into a volume is considering this itself to be the mesh and it's not considering it to be a closed mesh. So to actually make it a closed mesh, you have to go down to the bevel in the object data properties or the curve properties and just switch on fill caps. That way you get two caps to fill in the edges. And then when you actually go in, you'll see the particles are distributed within the actual volume as well. However, if the caps are filled, it will be harder for you to actually animate the loop. So in order to fix that, instead of using the fill cap, what we'll do is we'll change the resolution from amount to size in the mesh to volume node. And that way we'll get more particles towards the actual center of the tube. Apart from that, I also noticed that a lot of these spheres are getting clipped off long before they actually reach the screen. So to fix that, we're just going to select the camera and change this clip start all the way down to the minimum value that it goes down to, which is 0.001. And that way they still will get clipped, but they'll get clipped towards the last frame and hence they won't be that noticeable. Apart from that, I want the spheres to actually change in size. So I need some more variations. So to do that, we can use this instance on points node, search for a random value node, and we're going to keep it on float so that it scales it down equally on the X, Y and Z axis. And we can change the min to something like 0.1 and the max to something smaller than this because I don't want them to be this large. So I'll make it 0.5. Now, if I plug this into the scale, we get these particles and that looks perfectly all right for my animation. Now that we're done with this, we can go ahead and press zero to go out of my camera view, switch on overlays again, and just press Alt D Y and press control so that it snaps to grid and just match this up to the left and again press alt d y and match it up to the right as well that way if you actually go into your camera view now you're going to get a perfectly looping animation every single time along with that the frame rate starts to drop so change this back to the timeline and change playback to frame dropping and that way you'll see the actual speed at which your final animation is going to be created if you actually look towards the ending you should see it be a perfect loop so you can go to frame 300 and then change the frame to zero and just make sure that everything looks the exact same. Also switch off overlays to help you see that. So frame zero and frame 300 should look the exact same, which it is. And that means it's going to be a perfectly looping animation. Now you can start off the actual texturing. So we'll change this from the timeline to the geometry node editor and just add in the materials to each of these branches. So we'll search for a set material node and place that in over here and then press shift D and duplicate it and place it here. Now we need the actual material. So let's go to the material properties here. We can add in the default material as one material and then press plus to create a new material slot and then press new to add in a new material. Now we'll call this new material as particles and we'll call the first material as the tube. And over here, since the original geometry is the tube, we're going to change this to the tube. And down here, this one is going to be particles. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and change this to the shader editor. And you can change the viewport shading to rendered. Along with that, you can take the light and then press delete to remove it from the scene. Now you can select your original Bezier curve and start off with the texturing. So the first thing that I want is to have rings that are going to be lit up. So for that, I'm just going to search for a wave texture and I'll press control shift click with the node wrangler switched on to see what we currently have. And 
If we press zero to go out of the camera view, you can see how the waves are. The first thing is I want the white region to be much lesser. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp and plug that in right here. And then I'll bring the black in all the way to the edge so that we just have a very thin strip of white. Secondly, we I want these to actually curve along with the curve. So you see the curve is bending down. So this should also be bent diagonally like this. And here they should be bent like this. So to do that, we can press control T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. If you don't have the node wrangler, you can add them in manually and change it to UV. So that way it's going to curve along with the curve. Now you can press zero and just play the animation to see what we have. Now, if this is the number of rings that you want, that's well and good. Otherwise you can increase the scale as well, maybe something like eight to just increase the number of rings that are going to be visible. The next thing that we need is to make this much brighter. So for that, we can press shift A and search for a math node and change it from add to multiply and plug that in right after the color. And then you can increase this value to something high, maybe like five to have a nice bloom and plug that into the emission strength of the principal BSDF. And then you can press control shift click on the principal BSDF to actually view it. However, we don't see the actual emission because the emission color is set to black. So firstly, we'll change it off to white just to see it. But apart from that, we actually want this to also follow some sort of a gradient. So to do that, we'll press zero to go out of the camera view and press shift A and search for a gradient node. Now we can plug the color into a color ramp so that we have control over what colors the gradient is going to be. And we can just plug that into the factor and then we can control shift click the color ramp to see what we have. And this is how the gradient is going. So the first thing that we want to do is add in a few more markers so we can just press the plus a few times till we get the desired number of markers and then we're going to play around with the actual colors so i want this to go from like a purple through an rgb and then come back to a purple so we'll go ahead and take this black and change it to the purple color that we want and then change this absolute end and change this also to the same purple and we're doing that so that we actually get this area to also be a nice smooth transition now it's clearly not a smooth transition so we're gonna have to start bringing this slider in until we get it to be a nice smooth transition now again it's not a smooth transition which means we have to bring this slider in as well so once we do that we now have a smooth transition now we can take this slider and convert it to a nice red take the next one make it all the way bright and make it green and the last slider over here we can make it a blue so that way we get the entire shade but we also want to change this from linear to ease just so that it becomes a little smoother once we have that we can actually plug this color into the emission color and then control shift click the principal bsdf to see each of the stripes become this specific color so that might be exactly how you want it so you can press zero to go into your camera view and see what we have and we see everything else is too gray and that's because our world is still set to gray so we can go to the world and just decrease this value to make it much lower and that seems much better now you can actually play the animation to see what we have now that looks good but we need to actually play around with the sides so the areas that are not emitting we want it to be a lot more metallic so we'll increase the metallic value to something like 0.8 and we can play around with the roughness to get really cool textures so we'll just select everything move it down and then search for maybe a Voronoi texture and we'll change it from F1 to distance to edge. And then we can search for a color ramp node so that we have better control and plug the distance into the factor and then plug this color into the roughness of the principal BSDF. Once you see what we have, we can play around with the scale and we can play around with the actual sliders to get exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go with something like this and I don't want the black to be completely reflective. So I'm gonna change the black to a value of something like 0.3 and I'm going to increase the scale to 40 and I'm actually going to flip the color ramp and I'm also going to decrease this white from a value of 1 to a value of 0.8. So now that's the shape that we have for the sides and I think that's all right. The next thing that I want to do is actually give the materials to the circles or the spheres so we can go to the materials and then just select particles and for the particles I don't need the entire principal PSDF instead I can just delete it and press Shift A and search for glossy and plug that into the surface. Now I'm gonna reduce the roughness down to something like 0.3 and increase the color all the way to the brightest white there is. And that way they're just gonna be reflecting whatever they see towards the edges. And I guess that's good enough for what I want this animation to be. I feel like the sizes of the spheres have to be a little larger. So I'm just gonna go back to the geometry node, change the max value to maybe 0.8, change the min as well to 0.3. 
And there we have a perfectly looping sci-fi animation. If you want, you can go down to the color management and change the view transform look to high contrast, and that might make it look a little better. I'm also gonna go to the tube and just search for a hue saturation value node and just decrease the saturation by a very little amount. I'm gonna make the saturation 0.95, and that's all you have to do to create this particular looping sci-fi animation. Hopefully you learned something cool in that video and you can use this to create VJ loops and just have fun with it howsoever you please. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I will respond to all of your doubts. If you've watched this far, thank you so much for watching. The watch time really helps. And until the next video comes out, which is going to be tomorrow, don't forget to stay creative.